Hi guys, my name is John Gadesha. I'm a photographer based in Nairobi. And um, the owner of Velos Photography. And uh, I'm a millennial on the move. Pass it to six, then uh, you can highlight, highlight the nose and the forehead, and also contour the cheeks. Okay, basically what I do is uh, I do portraits, uh, I do birthday photo shoots, I do weddings, I do commercial beauty shots. Basically, most of the time you find I'm working with ladies. I love photography because every day you get to meet new people, you get to have different experiences, you get to learn how to interact with people, how to work with more people, and I think that's the most beautiful thing, like every day you have to meet new people who come from different backgrounds, people who come from different cultures, and yeah, it's a beautiful thing to work with a lot of people. Actually, I was in Dadia in campus, uh, and um, there was this guy, actually, he was my roommate. No, no, we used to live in the same floor. Uh, and now this guy used to get out of hostels and he go does some shoots here and there. And uh, one day I told him, hey, what do you do? Can I, can I join you when you, are, when you are going for a photo shoot? And yeah, and the guy just told me, okay, on our next photo shoot, I'll tell you to come and you can join me, you can see what I do. Yeah, that's how I got to know about photography. Like two years later is when I can say for sure I did start doing photography full time. That's after after campus, after I did I after I graduated, that is 2017. That's when I, I can say I started doing photography full time. Around around I think April. Yeah. I was born in a place called Kitongori <laughs> in Kiambu. And uh, I'm a second born in a family of three, born to uh, amazing parents called Jane Muhaki and George Gadesha. I can say I was not a bookwormer, though I was a bright kid. Actually, in terms of uh, the position, is either number one, number two, number three, but I was never a bookwormer. Naughty, yes, I was a naughty kid. And I used to love music, going out, you know. I'll be the, that kind of a kid who'll, who will miss school to just go out there and play or do something out there. I remember this time, I don't know who we were fighting with. We were fighting with a, with a certain kid. And uh, my sister, my sister uh, got called and she was told, uh, how is your brother back at, back at home? And I can tell you for sure. Without no, without even blinking, she was there saying how I was naughty, how I was bad, how my mom was doing this and doing this. I was like, you're my sister, you're supposed to defend me. <laughs> what, what do you mean? What do you mean I'm a bad kid? Like, <laughs> it was funny, but for real, for real, I was, I was a naughty kid, never doing my shows and everything. But over time, over time, I started becoming serious. Over time, I started becoming more focused as I, as I progressed like, with my education. Uh, I went to JG Kireini High School. It's in some place in Kibichoi, as you go to Ruiru, those sites. Um, now, in high school, my life was a bit different. Um, starting, of course, <laughs> naughty. No, not doing uh, classwork and everything, but around Form 2, I started becoming serious, more focused, and I started doing my classwork with more seriousness. But in terms of, uh, I used to play, I used to play hockey. I loved playing hockey and volleyball. Yeah, yeah. Even if, even though I'm short, I used to play well. <laughs> there is this thing where in in high school. You'll be given the birika with chai, then you go get your food, and then you go in the dining hall and eat. But as our, <laughs> our group, we never used to do that. We actually, we used to take the birika and the food, and then we go to the grao, and then we are there having stories, 
playing there and it's you know it's like weird hours like around 6 6 p.m and when that time people are going back to class we are just there playing and uh, drinking tea and just having fun i think that used to be so memorable the the small community we used to have and just have fun you know being young and having fun after high school actually it was pretty normal uh Kama <laughs> Kawida, I just went to a computer school, like most of us did. And from there, I went and did Korean language, I think for around six months. Yeah, and then from there, now I joined uh, University of Nairobi. I did political science and uh, sociology, double major. No, I love politics. I love politics. Like everything around us is about politics. Even uh, everything, everything around us is about politics and politics are very important. Uh, the course that I was about to do, it was uh, anthropology, I think. But then I did interfaculty transfer and I did political science and uh, sociology. Initially, I wanted to do sociology and economics. But then uh, I did not get an A in mathematics. <laughs> I had a B plus in mathematics. So. Yeah, so I thought, why not try political science? Yes, and I enjoy doing political science, yeah. As I've said before, like, I'm a, I'm a deviant kid, and I love to do something that I'm passionate about. And uh, so when I told my mom, like, I, there is this thing called photography I want to do, she was like, mm, are you sure? Does it have money? Because for them, things like photography, the imagining is the photography for 50 bob, 20 bob, those kind. And you are, you are a university <laughs> graduate. But over time, I think she start, started to support me more. And uh, of course, after you have made your, your money here and there, they start respecting your decision, yeah. In campus, I used to do hustling here and there. I used to have these things for smoky, I used to sell fruits here and there. So basically, I used to have my chums here and there. So I was hustling. So uh, I bought my first camera with money from, from doing fruits and uh, smokies. I used to sell smoky here in Uhuru Park. Yeah, so I bought my first camera. It was a second-hand camera. It was a D3200. It was a good camera. That's what I started with until now. Hustling, dogo dogo, here and there until I got my own camera. Yeah. First, you have to love what you do. I love making money. Don't get me wrong. And if something is making money, then I think I'm interested. What do you mean? If something is making money, I'm interested. It's as simple as that. Ah, this country, man. If you're young. <laughs> honestly. Uh, these Kanjo people, they used to ask for us like 300 in a day in Uhuru Park for, for have, just having a smoky thing, you know. It did not make any economical sense because when I'm in class, of course, I have someone who is, who is checking that. Like I had employed a lady who was selling the Mayai for me and everything. So if, if you are paying the lady around 350, 350 bob then kanjo come takes 300 kenyan shillings and you are buying the stock and also you need to be having profit i mean it's just too much so you'll find yourself most of the time you're not making a lot of money because of that so if the venture used to make more money believe me even now maybe i could be a cartel somewhere just selling eggs in nairobi but the the way nairobi is set up like small jobs are not are not respected and uh, People who gain more from small jobs, I think, is the the county county askaris and uh, the officials. Yeah, I was starting out as I have told you guys. I used to follow that photographer we used to work with. His name is Daniel, I, and um, he used to give me his cameras in exchange of assisting him. So when he has shoots where he is getting paid, I will. Um, accompany him and uh, through that I build that rapport where now if I'm, I'm coming to help you in your job I'm giving you something so when I, I used to tell him hey Dan there I have a I want to go train how to to shoot he used to give me his camera he was graceful enough but at the same time like nothing is for free of course when he has jobs I have to go and assist 
which I was not being paid as per that time. Yeah. Um, how I started shooting, I used to, I used to train with, with my ladies' friends, and, and that's a, a lady called Singer Esperanza <laughs> and another lady called Marietta. Actually, those are the two ladies, two ladies who I, I used to call and. You go just try out. You see, you try, you said, you post, and people comment here and there, and they're like, ah, I'm good, I think I'm good. Yeah, I start getting comments from people. Actually, actually, after I've done like my third shoot, that's when I knew for sure people are interested in this thing. Because you post an image, and the image has like 30 comments, 40 comments. Oh my God, these, these pictures, they look so amazing. And people are giving positive feedback. And I was like, ah. Oh. But this thing, this thing can, eh, can, can be something, can, you can mold up to something. So uh, after like my third shoot, I was pretty sure there is something here. Because when you see positive feedback from people, different people, you know for sure people are interested in your product. Yeah, and from there I started learning more. I started learning about Photoshop. But the, my first application of editing, it was, I don't know whether it's called Picasso or Picasso, something. It was a very funny kind of editing because you just you just increase the saturation and maybe increase the exposure or reduce. I don't remember the name of the. It was either Picasso or Picasso, something of a sort. Yeah. So basically, it was not like editing, editing. It was just increasing highlights and saturation, and that's it. And then you give the model, and they're like, they are so happy. I don't know why they were so happy because those images were terrible. I can tell you for sure. But they used to be happy and. That's what motivated me. If people are interested in something, then there is demand, then supply. Yeah. I've been doing this for the past five years. This is my fifth year doing this. And um, my biggest highlight was when I went to shoot a lady called Modoni Wamokiri. I think you can see I do a lot of photo, photo, images for her. And we were, shooting, we were shooting a birthday photo shoot. And I can tell you for sure, I was star struck. Like, I could not imagine, like, every celebrity was there from jackie vk from shikska pienga lilian muli and keguta like all these kind of big names were there and i was like oh my god am i the one who is teacher wajiko like these people they were just it was just too much it was it's like a met gala for 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 kenya or for nairobi like every celebrity that you know of from TV was there and um, I was excited and I knew for sure, hey, if these people like my job, my guy, I'm set for life. And I can tell you for sure, those people liked my job and I was set for life. Yeah, simple as that. This is a guy who makes me look good. Definitely. So much. Rafa. Up here. Yeah. Yeah. Now beautiful. It makes a team to form the dream. <laughs> okay, after you see now, you have you have built your community and more people are appreciating your job people are starting to book you you can find maybe per week you have like 10 shoots now you see for sure now i think you start becoming even more serious you start now even learning more now even being more serious be more professional because now 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 your audience is bigger and now people are, are expecting you to deliver the way you deliver to these big names so you have to deliver quite a good job working with these big names is that they they give you they give you certain confidence like now people people can start questioning who is this guy who has shot this influencer this this celebrity why why is Kamboa shooting with this guy of course and now you when they do that they go check your job and they see you have you have a whole catalog you have been you have been doing some good work and now people now have confidence like for sure we can hire this guy yeah so it builds your confidence and also business wise you have more clientele yeah
I have a low moment. I lost my laptop. Whoever stole that laptop, please bring it back. I beg, this is my Robin now. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, actually now, I think it's 20, 2019, I lost my laptop. I'm not sure whether it's caretaker alifanya hii kitu. I'm not sure. Eh? Sijui si yuko sure but man nilikuwa natoka job coming back to know nothing. Just no laptop and they left the charger there. They just took the laptop. I hope they are happy and hope the laptop is helping them. I think Kenyan influencers they are quite disciplined and uh, Kenyan influencers you'll find like big names big names you have to be respectable you have to respect them and they have they also respect you like if you this these big influencers in kenya they are quite displayed to be honest like you won't find yourself struggling to i mean like getting seduced and things like that no really really will you find such situations maybe the young influencers but the the more mature influencers no uh what i can tell our our parents are, or even new parents, like actually when your kid is like 10 years, buy them a camera, let them engage with the digital world, like the landscape have changed by a lot, like the, the to-go careers of yesterday are not the to-go careers of now, like if, you're, if your kid can become so good with a camera, there is endless opportunities, your kid can become a vlogger or a YouTuber, you know how much a YouTuber can make. Um, even if you see these big influencers, they have to have basic skills in using the cameras. And also like being able to make short film, films, being able to do photography, it pays. You never, the, the opportunities are, are endless. You can even go there, do your nature photography, you can go do your wild photography, and you can sell those canvas for so much. Like people make good money in this field that even a doctor will not end up making, yeah. I, I think, I think uh, for me, I make sure I, uh, what, I, what you see, what you internalize, that's what you process and that, that's what you give people. I keep my Instagram environment, our uh, environment of what I watch, what I I follow. I make sure that those things they are they are motivating me. The kind of photographers, other other photographers, kind of work I follow. I make sure it's motivating me. When when you when you see what other people are doing, then you are confident for sure. The things that you want to experiment, they are good enough. Also, yeah? and they also challenge you as a as a photographer. And then you have to keep learning, like anything, anything. You have to keep learning every day. You have to keep buying better equipment every day. You have to keep improving. At the end of the day, if I improve and people love my product, then I'm good to go. But that time when I will improve and people will not my will not like my product, I think it will be time to call it quits. <laughs> If I see something I like, it doesn't matter whether it's a, a beginner photographer who has done it. Mm -hmm. If I like what I've seen, for sure I will make sure I go check that person. I see how, how they did whatever they did, what they are doing different. I learn every day from either it's a beginner or it's a, a seasoned photographer. It doesn't matter. I learn from everything, every little thing I see and, I, and for sure I can see it's a good thing. Uh, prepare for the worst, hope for the best. Like you have to prepare for, for during your rainy days, you have to prepare when tough season comes. And uh, then when you prepare, you, no one knows about the future. You only hope things will be good depending on how you have prepared. Instagram is my favorite platform. Uh, and actually 70% of my clientele come from Instagram. I think most of the time we do not go hard enough and also, we are not patient. Like, I'm a kid GP, Ushatoka, hoping from one thing to another. I think you should you should give enough time for anything to grow. I'm a to anything to request something that you can say. You know what? I think I'll settle here. Money factor. It doesn't matter. The end justifies the means. Not in a wrong way, or, or maybe that you go and kill someone or do something that is negative. No, I mean, like it doesn't matter. If you're doing the right thing, whether you arrive early or late, it doesn't matter. As long as you 
you you attain your goal, you're good to go. One thing people don't know about me, I love farming. I love farming. Like, I just love farming. I swear I love farming. Even if you're selling water, even if you're selling just some, anything that you're selling, you can make money off it. Like, think about numbers. How many people are there in the country? How many people consume your product? How big is is the industry, whether you're in an industry that is worth 100 million, 2 billion, and uh, when you understand the market of whatever you're selling and how big the industry is, then you can make money. So don't be scared starting out early. Start as early as you can. Keep learning. If you decide to be in the fashion industry, make sure you're learning how to do small details, whether it's teaching, whether it's learning about color palettes, designing make sure you're good at whatever you do make sure you're on top of your game not on top of game depending with whichever country or whatever vision you have but around your clientele just be on top of your game and be sure people will pay for that people will will pay for the premium for the premium product yeah you guys can get me at velos photography on instagram facebook